Hi, this is hey. George. Wait, hold on. We tried to do the intro. All right, I did. Well, you just like sprung it on me. What are we gonna say? What? I'm not ready oh. for this. <laughs> Hi, this is George. And this is Christian. And we're here to talk about Tales from the Borderlands, and there will be spoilers. Yes, all the spoilers. What What are your initial thoughts about this uh, this game? Well, I mean, since I've played it before. I had, <laughs> I've already had thoughts from that time. You know, it was a while ago, uh, but I still remember the key moments in the episodes that I did play. I didn't finish it, right, because it was still coming out. Um, and so, I don't know, from my second playthrough, my initial thought was, I, I'm not into the, like, telling a flashback as the entire story. Like, I understand that it brought a lot of, shenanigans that the you know that the scenes could portray because you know it's just like embellishments in a story from two characters but i don't know there's like after that i just noticed like every little cliche and i couldn't get over it like i kept notes and like i want to say like a, a fourth of my notes are like just pointing out cliches yeah can you <laughs> give me give me one cliche i want to hear this all right hold on let me i tagged them uh I mean, like I said, the start, right, is the first one. It's the same old, like, tell me your backstory while I take you to your prison setup, right? Like, you, you see this in a lot of games. Yeah. Right? Like Skyrim, for example, like, all, almost all the Elder Scrolls. Like, this is, like, the, the quintessential way to start a game these days, apparently. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of an old game, but still, you see this a lot. Um, so that's one. That's one. All right, that's good enough for me, I guess. My initial thoughts was, I'm not as impressed by this game. That's probably because I played like a lot of Telltale games. Then, like yeah, you... my very my very first good Telltale game, I was pretty pretty hooked. But then, you know, by the time this rolls around, I've already got like four Telltale games under my belt. But yeah, it's still a good game though. I mean, I still enjoy it. Yeah, I I, I, I try it. to look past it. I think it was mostly a comedy game. So, what what would you give this score? Uh, so like our out of arbitrary scales. <laughs> Just make uh, up a scale. Yeah, all right. I'll make a scale out of five. Uh, with which is pretty arbitrary because I'm gonna go like point <laughs> in like tenths of a of a digit. Uh, but I think I'll go like like three point eight. All maybe all the way to like maybe f like four point one kind of thing. Oh. You're so generous yeah. with your points. Yeah, I'm pretty generous, man. I mean, I still enjoyed it. Like, I, I the hours that I put into it, like 57. Uh, I, I'm sure not all of that is is real playtime, but still, it shows that I enjoyed just looking at the story and playing it over a few times to see how it would change the outcomes and stuff. Damn, do you actually played it twice? Because I I yeah, just live well, with my choices. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't, like, reload the scene and just look at everything like that. Like, I actually just do full playthroughs. And I've done this with multiple of the Telltale games. Because uh, I've also played almost all of them. I, I haven't done the Game of Thrones just because I'm not really into that uh, franchise as much as most people are. I'm surprised you can even claim you played most of their games. They have made quite well, a most few. Of their, most of their, uh, most of their adventure, good little games. adventure games. <laughs> No, I mean, that's all they make, right? That's the only thing yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, there's, there's, they got quite a bit. I got their pack on Steam, like all the other big packs. It's just a lot of games you can play, man. Have you played the Back to the Future Telltale game? No, actually, I have not played that. One. I'm not, I'm not into that uh, that movie as much as other people too. So I don't, I didn't get that interested in it. Like, what, oh wait, what was God. the what was the name of the game with the dog? Oh, uh. Damn it, Max! Yes, oh. yeah, I'm that was in the bundle, and I played it just because I was like, "Hey, man!" Like, I heard this was pretty good, and it was. Yeah, it was pretty. It was, it was, it was enjoyable, man. The characters are super witty at times, and it's like, I think I can get into the like the comedy, like you said earlier, of this because it's so kind of abstract, right? Instead of being you know people, and there's like rules tied down to that. This is a lot more fun. Well, time to give my score. And what's your score? My scoring system is 0 to 5, just like yours. 
Right. Except I'm much more harsh. <laughs> I'm gonna give this two stars. This is stars, not points. <laughs> oh, five. Two points. Two stars. Two. No, no, I'll go I'll go zero to five stars. And there's no half star shit. So it's full stars? Yeah, so two full stars. Dang. So, so there's another way I like to think about it is I have a thumbs down, thumbs sideways, and thumbs up. And that's the first three stars. The thumbs down actually just gives you zero stars. Okay. So thumbs down just means I didn't like it, I didn't enjoy it. You know, thumbs sideways means I played through it. Maybe I enjoyed it. Eh. Maybe I, it was a job. I feel like yeah. Albion kind of emphasizes <laughs> the, the <laughs> sideways star. All right. And then thumbs up. I, I enjoy the game. So. I like this game. It was pretty short. I feel like it didn't overstay its welcome. I can feel it kind of dragging a little bit at the end. So it's a good thing they like hyped up the end and then get the hell out of here because if it was any longer, I might have not you know, right. enjoyed playing through the entire thing. And then after the th three, st uh, the second star, there's Michelin star one, which is the third star. I don't even know what it is. This is an impossible score to get. Impossible wait, to get three wait, stars. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm kind of confused. <laughs> so you said it's a five star rating, right? It's a five star rating system. Right, Sideways gives only... you one. Yeah, but only okay, right, the first it, three yeah. star uh, stars were actually achievable. <laughs> so, good luck getting the last three points. It's impossible. <laughs> so wait, what's a what's a? You said two stars out of five. What's a three star out of five game? Three star. You. Uh, it, it it's go it goes by the Michelin star system, where you get one Michelin star, for whatever the fuck Michelin does. I don't, I don't I don't look into how they distribute their their points here. Can I, you inform me? I think it's just like you have to be a ridiculously amazing game. With amazing service <laughs> just but saying you can't you, that's so abstract so give me give me give me an example like there's no example this is so impossible are you saying there has never been a game that earns the three out of five star ranking for you uh maybe team fortress 2 i would say that yeah team maybe. fortress 2 is a three star game three yeah. out of five and then they're... four and five they just don't <laughs> exist man they don't exist okay they don't exist that is except maybe ocarina of time but i haven't actually played that are you serious? Why yeah. would you? No, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I love Ocarina, but I don't know why it's like it's always so you know coveted all the time. I don't know. <laughs> oh, here's here's how I think about my system. Okay, there's Weird. thumbs up, thumbs down, and thumbs sideways, and the extra three stars are just there <laughs> as They're impossible just there, targets just to make you look bad. <laughs> yeah, as impossible targets. That's fair. I mean, that's just weird, man. But uh. All right, because I kind of like the thumbs down, thumbs up, or sideways. Just like, you know, is it even like that's pretty clear cut. I like that because you'll just like, is this game worth my time? Thumbs up, you know. Like, would you ever if if would you recommend a sideways? Is I guess where I'm getting at here. So I feel like uh, a one star game in your scale. I guess there are there are some there are some games that are like you know. They're amazing. They're addictive. You you play it it's like the first five hours. I just yo, know, oh, this is, game is so good. I'm looking at you, Total War. But I feel like after you know the twentieth hour, you're probably really bored. The game gets really repetitive after that. So you know, that, I would give that a thumb sideways. And uh, I would right. I recommend playing it if you're like into that sort of thing. And I would definitely recommend just trying it if you've never tried anything of that genre. Just to see if you would like it. That's about it. All right. I mean, so this is kind of a weird question, right? But like, at what? At how many hours until you deem it like enough to judge it by its merits of not going overboard, right? Because like you're you're putting all this expectation that you're going to be playing this game continuously, right? As in, or not an experience. Well, like I'd I understand say, for multiplayer games, right? But I say ten hours is a good. Is a good like vibe to know. Hey, yeah. how much? I mean, I was agree. this game like, worth I, it? Was this game you know amazing? Was this ah right? But uh, I don't know. I guess you're saying because you said that, like maybe you can play a game for like twenty hours. Like you're really into it for five hours, but and then over time you kind of lose interest. 
Like maybe that's just a really like a, it's like a five star three hour game, right? I don't, you know, like what what makes what makes the amount of time you play it. Oh, that's uh, that's a confusing thing to me, I guess. Unless the game is actually that long, you know. Well, uh, okay, I'm gonna use Total War as the example here. The game itself, like if you play the grand campaign, I think that's like the main single player experience. So if you play that mode. That mode, I'm still playing in a single game session. Like, it's still the same save file. Let me see. Let me check how many hours. I played 30 hours on All pretty right. much one save file. You know, I've, I've played as the Brits, the British people, and we still haven't conquered all of Europe. It's <laughs> taking fucking forever. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the strongest nation in the world right now. It's just okay. like, oh, I have to go through the motion of conquering. You know, have you played Civilization? Yeah, yeah I, was about, I was about to bring up Civ, dude. That's I was basically... Thinking it. Like, like, there's a point, point in that game where you know you, you're the winner. <laughs> but yeah, you still play the game because the game hasn't let, gotten you the win yet. Yeah, exactly. It, and it just feels so prolonged, right? Like, there should be a, like a surrender. Like, if you're just so much better than them, and, like the AI, <laughs> the AI, AI doesn't care. Win, <laughs> just stop. Like, come on, man. <laughs> but, we know I mean, how this is. That's the least fun. I mean, that's I don't know. That's the easiest way to win in that game, though. Yeah, that's true. I've never won a uh, non-domination. I've only done I've only done a cultural victory. Really? Yeah, I've done I'm... domination pretty much every time. Wait, which one is domination again? You just kill everyone. Your army. <laughs> oh no! So that's the that's the no. Okay. Because uh, I don't know. You can do uh, the other types of wins, man. I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. But cultural after like five, five like serious tries, I actually got it. Oh well, the easy way is to literally destroy everyone's culture by destroying them with armies. And then leave one guy <laughs> alone and just go for a culture win. No, that's that's not the right way to do it. Man. Okay, okay. Anyways, like, the game is what you make it, right? Like you don't want to. Sure, man. Kind of weird. All right, we got we got sidetracked talking about the score. Dude. All right, let's go back to tales. tales of, yeah, from tales the of the world lines. Uh, so I guess we should say like, uh, we said what we liked or what we thought about it. So. I mean, is there anything in particular you disliked? Um, I think I'll get to that later. I wanted to go to, like, what is the summary of this game? Oh, right, all right. This game, you play as, what, what's his name? I don't even remember. Vaughn? Uh, no, Reese? I didn't play with subtitles, so I could never uh, catch their names. <laughs> But they say their name all the time, dude. No, they don't. It's oh, okay. All right, sure, man. Yeah, the main character's name is Reese. Uh, Bon is the nerdy guy. Alright, shit. I I forgot their names. The accountant. The accountant, yes. I basically memorize everyone else's name except the person I play that. That that's kind of fair, I guess, because kind of internalize I mean that's kind of telling you how much you internalize being the character though, you know. You're right, his name is Reese. Yeah, Reese dude, and Fiona. It's, but it's not spelled like normal Reese, it's all this. <laughs> You know, R R H Y S. <laughs> like what? Yeah. So, long story short, you are not playing as super overpowered vault hunters. That would be too easy, <laughs> right? I I'm surprised these two characters got through like the entire game by mostly just talking to people. <laughs> I mean, one of the I mean, they're both made out to be these just like. Talkers as a living, right? Like one's a con artist, Fiona. I don't even know what Reese does for. A living. Uh, he's supposed to be the closer in his like uh, in his department or whatever, right? That's and then he's getting a promotion because of it. And then he's supposed because he he's janitor. like such a charmer, right? That's how he's moving up the ladder. Yeah, basically, whole... you start the game as a janitor. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, pretty much after you know that altercation, but yeah. yeah, you start as a janitor and then you go to buy a vault key from Fiona. Funny enough, the Whoa. second the second playable character, and then uh, the vault key's fake. Long story short, you go on this wild goose chase. Uh, what? How do you even get a hold of the first? Oh yeah, you just 
you're just in this death race for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just. Why did you go to the death race again? Oh yeah, you were following the suitcase of ten million dollars. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The the whole plan is much more connected and better <laughs> sounding than we're making it out to be. Well, long There's story short, a lot of events go on, right? Yeah, and, a lot yeah. of things happen really quickly we in part one, but you get a hold of this ball that happens to be a uh, a real volcano, <laughs> right? And they're like, "Well, we're just here. Might as well get the volcano. There's supposedly money well, in it." They don't they don't know it's the volcano yet, right? Like, well, it leads to a volcano. Right, right, of course, but it's actually a little cute little robot, right? Of course. <laughs> like he's, that's, I think he's the best character, honestly. Not she, is it a girl? It I is a ever... she. They always call it a she. Okay. Well, it's uh, it's Gordis. Yeah, Gordis. The, from the Gord, as the Gordis Project is what it's Yeah, she, her name is Gordis. Her name. And then, um... So you, and then pretty much the rest of the game is you upgrading Gordis so that you can find the vault. And then you find the vault, you open the vault, there's a monster inside, and then you beat the monster. The end. And funny <laughs> enough, there's no money in the vault. <laughs> what a load of crock. Dude, the journey is is the valuable here. Hello. I know. It's funny because I feel like they all got the mo the thing they got out of is you know, the vault was not the vault. It was uh, they got rich from chasing after the vault. You know, like uh Reese became CEO of Atlas. I don't know what Fiona did. I guess Fiona really didn't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so he's actually got somewhere. Uh, Vas Vasquez is dead, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. He does he always die? Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, only in mine. I got him killed. I <laughs> yeah. Man, that's, right. that's, that's something I would want to talk about, right? Like, how much you can actually influence the outcomes in, in these games? Most games is not very much. Yes, and even this game, really. Yeah, looking at the plot summary on Wikipedia, probably not. It's not a lot. Let me just quickly look up, does Vasquez have to die? Oh, Vasquez always dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's inevitable, man. That's crazy. I mean, it makes sense. There's this huge plot that deals with yeah. his corpse it makes yeah i mean there's a lot of places where there's no budging in this game right like because <laughs> or else you wouldn't be able to tell a cohesive story or at least it would take so much effort <laughs> to yeah. make so many branching cohesive Any, stories. anytime there's a branch he, the branch is mostly a footnote like right. oh you have a different hat right. that would definitely be a branch i mean one of them that changes is like sometimes you can get it so that uh they get frozen in a certain animation in, in a certain scene or something. Really? I've never yeah, seen that. Yeah, like... Uh, that sounds like a bug. It might be a bug, but that's what happened to me. I <laughs> I've, had, I've had only one bug. I think it was in The Wolf Among Us, where I think every text option had the same text. Or is there's like that's... a missing text <laughs> in like <Weird>. all caps? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, the weirdest one I've seen were just visual stuff. A lot of clipping, but not, nothing... From the system side, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. Oh, it's... anyways, what's what's his name? The what's the nerd's name? Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn. He becomes the leader of uh, Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> he must lead. Basically, Loderbot becomes. I don't know. He just wants the wasteland. Oh, he got a new body. That's, nice, That's true. And then Lord is actually downgraded. We we went through all this trouble to upgrade him, and he just ditched all the upgrades at the end. And his his job was complete, I guess. I know, right? But was... how cool would it be to have legs? That's, that's true. That was a cool scene when he like got the upgrade, and he's just like, "Oh, I got these now." And he's just like, "What? I'm still going." I mean, the legs don't seem to be that much better than the wheel. <laughs> they just look funnier, dude. To be honest, and let him carry him, I guess. But still. Oh my gosh. What a, what a roller coaster of emotions this game. I was. feel like we didn't explain the game very well, to be honest, though. <laughs> okay, it's a point and click adventure game, basically. If you yeah. miss those games, there's a lot of quick time events. Yeah, it's it's QTE, the game. Yeah. Think Heavy Rain. QTE, the game. That's exactly what this game is. It, it's like, like Heavy Rain, except there aren't alternate endings. <laughs> <sighs> Such a shame, though. Heavy Rain had sense. a ton of stuff, though. Yeah. 
Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, unlike other point and click adventure games, you don't like combine a fish with the another person. You don't have to like look in, at everything and try yeah, to. You use don't have everything. to actually solve any puzzles, really. <laughs> yeah, there's there's basically no puzzles. <laughs> There's no puzzles, dude. There are thinly veiled attempts at puzzles. I don't know. I think they're genius about this. Uh, to kind oh. of try to trick people into thinking they're like solving well, puzzles. When the puzzle really is not. you have to click everything on the screen. <laughs> <sighs> and they highlight it usually, right? They like, yeah. look at me. I mean, the main mechanic is you can press Q and you have this special scanner, dude. Of course. Of course. Yeah, that's the main mechanic that separates this game from, I guess, The Wolf Among Us. Or, right. You know, every other Telltale game. I mean, they usually employ some way to investigate things sometimes. Like, sometimes just an item. But, yeah, this game, just from the get-go, <laughs> you have this power. Okay, I am, yeah, I can have, hack into machines. You have the Batman, uh, the Batman detective mode. Right, right. I thought it was great, actually. The detective was like, I kind of wanted to do it more. I think I missed some early moments because it would do some humorous stuff. Yeah, there's some, so there's some good stuff. quips, but it's like, yeah, you don't really... I, I don't see the merit just like of hiding it, right? Like, okay. It's just like a mechanic that's begging to, to make you think you're, you're actually doing something extra, but you're really not. Um, but there's some good quips, like if you uh, if you scan the vault key, right, uh, in the deal, you can figure out that it's like fake and like you have a different option. Oh wow, I didn't yeah. know that. I I forgot to fucking scan the vault key. Yeah, I man. See, like you just kind of forget, and right, that's the the weird part for me. Like you should just have that option now. I guess I don't know. Damn. Well, what'd you say when when you figured it out as a fake? I I didn't. I was I was because that's what oh, I did damn. the first time, and so I just play. I knew I knew what I was doing. Like I didn't want to see the exact same thing, so I picked the one where I just like didn't. Uh, I I just let him do it, and yeah, it's nothing changed really, other than uh, on Fiona says. Uh, oh, sorry, not Fiona. Assistant? Sasha, yeah, Sasha. Sasha says that you know he if he he like scans it, we're in trouble or whatever, and it's just like a different little dialogue that they use. Like, okay, I mean, it's it's different, right? So it's I like didn't, your experience. I didn't is scan it. I but... feel terrible. Uh, I don't really want to play it again though, <laughs> just to see, <laughs> just to see that one little quip. I don't know. Oh yeah, if, if you if you, I really enjoy just like art style and it's a good story like even though it has a riddled with cliches i still enjoyed it i think it's it's i i let a lot of it pass because uh it's like tv but better right because like i can i'm kind of a little bit involved yeah I, I, don't, I don't know that that's actually something i kind of thought about what if we had a a movie theater where it was just a telltale game where you could you know choose your options as a crowd yeah basically as a crowd it would be kind of like twitch shit. plays twitch plays theater. that'd be kind of cool to be honest like, as a, a viewing experience well, the problem have... is though like uh, you know there people there's gonna be people who would be like oh i didn't i didn't get to see the one i wanted so i don't accept this shit and they get mad you know like i don't know maybe maybe so it would be okay. cool though they, have you ever gone to those uh classrooms where they have clickers yeah yeah, yeah. The eye I, was, clickers. I was kind of thinking some a movie theater like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, or, or even anything else, really. But, but well, movie theaters with like branching paths. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's this one ride in Epcot. Have you ever been to uh, Disney World? <laughs> no. Order? No. So there's a ride in Epcot. Epcot is a. Uh, it's kind of like California Disney Adventure, except sure. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the rides in Epcot are terrible, by the way. Spoilers. <laughs> All of them? All of them. But there's wow. there's this one ride where I actually kind of enjoyed it. Epcot, the uh, flying flying ride. Uh, it's called Soarin', Soarin' Around the World. During the line, there's a huge like projector with a screen. And you can log in with to a website using your smartphone, I guess, and like play this trivia game. It will ask oh. you, like, it was the capital of Ireland. And then they'll give you four choices in multiple choice. And you have to guess for your team. And then you know, your team gets a score. I was like, this, this line is more fun than the actual ride. 
<laughs> Why would anyone use a fast pass? This list line is awesome. That sounds like a really good idea, at least for the lines. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, what if we did that for a movie theater? You just have a smartphone, and then you could like, you know, vote to wait to see which ending you want to see. Yeah, I mean, the smartphone would be the quick way, but I don't know. I would like to have a panel like on the seat. Oh uh, yeah. Right. Because and then like all these screens are gonna be on while the movies. You and your logistical questions. What? destroying my dreams i'm just saying you could still do it you just need to put a pad with like a little on the seat it's not a big deal i guess so i guess but, so. oh wait 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 but and then i guess like if the seats are empty and then you can just vote multiple times piss people <laughs> off oh man i don't know i, I still think, I think this it would be, be cool, cool though like yeah that'd be kind of i, I think interesting. the only way we can convince people to do it is with the smartphone Maybe I, I don't know. Like if it's people don't want to pay if it was there. People don't want to pay extra. Oh, like this stupid clicker that you'll never use again. What? Because Install. they don't have to do anything. It's all. It would be all like on their armrest or something. <coughs> well, then you have to install an armrest into like the movie theater. The, what? Yeah, you would put a little. All right, whatever. This is why this costs money. This? It costs money. It does. But you know what, what costs more money? <laughs> Making branching pads on movies. <laughs> you, the it's been done you before. Would make, you would spend putting on pads on theaters is so trivial compared to... Hey, it's actually been done before. But, I mean, doing it commercially over the long period, you know? Like... They've, they've done branching paths in movies uh, exactly once, and it was a huge flop. <laughs> it's just a movie called Clue. Wait, how did... How did uh, oh. <laughs> How did they? Uh, how I did they choose? Did they, they just, have like? They just gave you know each theater a different ending. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why everybody oh my was God. pissed. Good shit, man. I think it. <laughs> I think it failed though because the movie sucked. Okay, I mean, I would have still been pissed <laughs> without giving at least a sample. Well, of I don't think they they you know advertised that this was you know branching paths. Right, until they like <laughs> talk to the friends that we saw it another day or something from somewhere else. Uh, go, oh, yeah, that's how it ended. No, <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think we sidetracked again. Okay. About I, Disney Florida. I don't even know why we're talking about games in a line. Oh, because it's like, but better. <laughs> Did you, you know, uh, when, when they ask you what's your name during the part one? I, I uh, said vaguely. I said my name is ten million dollars. Oh, I think I said that too. And they're, <laughs> they 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 were all snarky at me. What a bunch of dicks! Oh man, I love that line though because it's a reference to another video game. Which one? Uh, it's a reference to Shadow Warrior the remake. I didn't play that game. Well, it's kind of like Shadow Warrior. The first one's kind of like a Doom, I guess Doom One, where everything's two D. In uh, yeah, pretty much all the enemies in 2D, you're shooting this gun that like sticks out of your chest. You know uh, what I'm talking about? No, I don't. What? Oh my god. Yeah, I'll just link you a Shadow Warrior. All right. You make. Here's the uh, Shadow Warrior game. This is this doesn't actually show you what the Shadow Warrior the original game was like, but. You know, it's just an FPS, and then at the very start of this game, though, you walk into this like Yakuza hideout place, yeah. and you the guy's like, "What's your name?" and you say, ten million dollars," even though your name is a uh, low rank. <laughs> okay. And then you have a suitcase of ten million dollars, and that's the only reason why I chose that. <laughs> that's kind of cool. I like it. I wonder if the like. You know, the writers are inspired by that game. I hope so. This game is, like, very comedy-based. and You know, a lot of comedies. Yeah. Referential-based. That's true. A lot, of, a lot of puns and hiding references part of comedy. So I like Rick and Morty, man. Oh, I didn't know Rick and Morty. I did. I oh, references. It has so many references. Why, are you kidding me? I don't <laughs> pay joke, attention. Right? I don't pay attention. That's a attention. joke, right? Uh, I, I seriously don't. Like that it's been a long time. Always references very much. It's been a long time since I've watched Rick and Morty. I mean, sure, but like literally every episode. Yeah, like Cronenberg. <laughs> That's a reference to something. 
<laughs> is it the Cronenberg monster? Oh my god! What's a Cronenberg? Uh, I thought Rick and Morty invented it. <laughs> What's a Cronenberg? Oh, Dave yeah, let Cronenberg. Me, let me link you stuff. The there's a movie I forget what it's called, but the director is Cronenberg. Yeah, so... his name is David Cronenberg, and yeah. he makes a lot of films about body horror. And... Yeah, there's so many references. Oh, he made The Fly. That's a pretty, uh... Wait, that's a book, right? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they made it a movie. I don't know if they did, though. It's a movie by David Cronenberg. Yeah, man. Wait, The Fly's gotta be a book, right? Whoa. Wait, no, it's a movie. It's a really old movie. There we go. No, it was a film? What the heck? No, 1958. Yeah, yeah I was right the first It's an extremely old movie. Okay. Yeah, and there's there's quite a bit like uh, dang. I, see now all these things are, you know that floating head, spaghetti monster. <laughs> no, uh, the glowing head in the episode where uh, uh, there's that one planet with the oh. zorp zorps and you know, and like the female super race. Yeah, that's a reference to like. Planet of the Apes? Gordon, or whatever it's called. I forget no, what, what the reference is, but I know that's a reference to something. Anyways, we're, I'm moving on from this, this silly Gazorp Gazorp nonsense. <laughs> Alright, so... So one what, thing I was really annoyed by this game was I couldn't move with the mouse. Oh, uh, you, you want, like, click click to move? Yeah, because that's what uh, like, Tales uh, Secret of Monkey Island does. That's another point to click. You you click to move. Yeah, because I mean, there's. But then I think the idea is they expect you to have your hand on Wazda, essentially. I expect to be playing this game while like in bed. Yeah, no, that's the... <laughs> what I expect too. But then you got these QTEs that you I have. Know. That's okay. We just to. failed us. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to fail, George. I so. failed some of them. Just because you couldn't react in time, right? No, because I just wanted to see what would happen. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're usually you know some just like losing scenes. Yeah, usually they they're just really embarrassing. Pretty much. But sometimes the 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 game just keeps going. <laughs> so it, it just remembers that you failed. Yep. Think so, of you as a loser. I uh, yeah, I'm basically a giant loser. That's why I, I played eleven hours. Oh jeez. Instead of this ten, yeah. So it's like an hour and a half, two hours an episode, right? I I would Ish. say two hours an episode. Two hours, yeah. I don't know, I did three. Yeah, it's longer if you listen to the credits. That's true. I I don't I don't. I think I started to because I I feel like I miss out on some, some memories if I don't listen to the credits. All right. The one thing I've noticed about Telltale is that they always have gore. Uh, yeah. I feel I just, like I can't get through a single Telltale game without cutting off my own arm, somebody else's arm. An arm <laughs> must be severed from the rest of the torso. I, I think it's just like pretty generic, dramatic trope, right? Gotta sever a limb. I, I don't know if they purposely do it in all their games and like that, but we'll think uh, about it. What? Think about it. The first Walking Dead. Yeah. You cut off. You you have the option yeah. to cut off your own arm, which and is I completely did, I did pointless. It. I did it too. Pointless it's complete. You, you still die. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing that changes is you have no arm for the rest of the game. <laughs> this dramatic moment, but it's like going through that that QTE is like. Oh man, going through that QTE was brutal, horrific, dude. man. Yeah, it's brutal. It's like it's like that uh, mini game in Grand Theft Auto where you could cr- you could torture a guy. I don't remember GTA this, man. 5. Right, I didn't oh play 5, God. man. I skipped this one. Well, in GTA 5, there's this moment where you could pointlessly torture, like, you know, this immigrant. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, uh, there's, there's the option to skip it because I think it stirred up some controversy. <laughs> but basically, like, you have this table full of fucking torture tools. Oh, my God. I'm not going to talk about it here. It's too graphic. Wow. Anyways, in the in the second Walking Dead, you have the option to cut off somebody else's arm. 
and this this simply results in her dying. Yeah. <laughs> She's dead no matter what, but she'll die faster if you cut off her heart. I did it. I did it too. I did it too. <laughs> I was like, my god, I get a chance to cut off somebody's heart. Yeah, of course. You my god, go I, for that. Go f like if it's if it's just a Tuesday, I, I'm going to wake up and cut off my own heart. <laughs> Uh, Wolf Among Us? Yeah, I cut off that guy's arm. <laughs> Holy, there's literally no reason for this one, by the way. In the Wolf Among Us, you're, you basically have this guy in a, like, headlock, and you're just like, rip arm off? You never rip off arm. <laughs> <laughs> so casual, dude. I know, and I was like, rip off arm. And then, as soon as I clicked it, I was like, my god, I made a horrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you have struggle with the QTE. Oh, it was so, so gory. And then even, uh, what's it called? Heavy Rain has a cut-off arm segment. It's, they got a hard-on for that kind of thing, man. Oh, in I Heavy mean, Rain, it goes further. I understand, further. though. Like, it, it makes for like a very tense QTE, right? <laughs> you got to have those moments of struggle. And what's the best way to struggle? Cutting through. <laughs> Cutting through your own arm. arm, apparently. And then Tales from the Borderlands. Remember that cutting off arm segment? Wait, what are you talking about? You have to cut off your mechanical arm. Oh. Reese, Reese does it at the part five. That's not uh, like does he feel like this is some bullcrap? He he pulls out his own eyeball too. So so all right, I have a question. What's up? Uh, you know how Handsome Jack is a hologram? He he's basically an AI. But like, can he can he feel stuff? Or was he just being a jackass most of the time? Um, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he can feel emotions. <laughs> or maybe he was just imitating emotions? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he could feel pain or anything. Uh, I don't know. It's because he, he had a lot of lines that seemed very, like, made him sound like he could. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a very he had, uh, like physical exertion or something. He's a very human like AI. He's not like beep boop, I'm a robot. Well, he, he's not like a not even Loaderbot is that, right? Like, yeah. Pretty much all the robots in Borderlands are very comical comically human. Yeah, like robots I guess would be like, you know, C three PO, we have a seventy three percent chance to die, you know? Repeating that. They do that a little just like bit. A Leroy joke. No, no, that's C-3PO. He does that, remember? Does he? I don't, dude, I don't know. Are you kidding me? I guess there's a, there's that robot in Star Trek. Data? He's like not, a robot person? He's, he, yeah, he's like a cyborg. He helps out on the ship. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much a giant idiot. Because <laughs> he so doesn't mean. understand humans. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Handsome Jack was pretty much like a, a carbon copy of like the human very handsome jack yeah cause like at the start like he's like talking about like how he doesn't know he's a hologram <laughs> that's some bullshit right there like what oh maybe he did he was just tricking you yeah oh I guess maybe, that's what I'm saying like is he just being a complete asshole the whole time I mean handsome jack the human was character. still an asshole <laughs> True. but he was dependent on the guy so you th you'd think he'd be easy on it I don't know I know he, he's he's a pretty stupid AI. Oh, oh dude, and in my notes, I right, do you remember Finch. I don't remember this guy. Oh, uh, we gotta talk about his hair. Who is Finch? Uh, he's one of the two thugs that uh, <laughs> almost beats up Fiona and yeah. Sasha. Yeah, the uh, Mohawk. Yeah, <laughs> like I remember, cause like you know how this this is something I really like in the game. Actually, is that when they introduce new characters, they do that little. Yeah, the Fourth borderlands wall breaking little scene thingy. The borderlands introduction where they zoom yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, all that, they do this in Telltale games, other Telltale games too. Sometimes. Oh really? But, but uh, I really like it here. <laughs> uh, like the, the obviously it fits the borderlands thing, but uh, yeah. I love the little captions. And then this guy's was don't talk about his hair. <laughs> I was like, we we have to talk about his hair. Yeah, I I talked about. It. What did you do? Of course, talk about his hair, dude. Super weird. It's like a, it's like a mohawk, but it's not really right. Like he like folds the hair over. It looks it. like a normal mohawk to me, actually. What? What kind of graphics you got, man? 
I don't remember. I don't it's think just... they changed it, but it looked like he like the hair folded over. It was like a mohawk shape, but it looked like it folded over, and he had like a clamp on it. He has a tattoo on the front. I don't know. It looks like a mohawk to me. He he has a tattoo of a mohawk in front on his forehead, but everything else is just a mohawk. Oh wait, no, you're right. It's not a mohawk. It's a. It's not. It's like folded hair or something. It's like a Native American thing. I don't know what to say. But I'm just going <laughs> to go with it's a mohawk. Uh, I just felt like I had to talk about it because they told me not to. I thought his glasses was the dumbest part, though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Where's the option to talk about his dumb glasses? So, one of the parts I actually enjoyed about this game was spending money on useless stuff. Yes! I. <laughs> what's your favorite purchase? I think mine is when you can buy <laughs> a ridiculous car and it at a ridiculous markup. And it's just like a different paint job. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and like random. I feel like they don't give you enough money in this. Because I would to, just. You I have just to get it, it from people usually or like. <coughs> you know. The only time I got money was find, was pickpocketing and, you know, just like finding it in chess. I never talked yep. to somebody and they're like, you're so money. Oh, you really? Know, like, that you, almost never you happened. Didn't, you didn't uh, get an extra thousand dollars from Scooter? Uh, I don't think so. Like when he offers you for a sponsorship, you can. Oh, I think I took the sponsorship. You can accept the sponsorship and then like, be like, you gotta sweeten the deal, <laughs> and you're like, how about an extra thousand dollars signing bonus? And Damn. He's like, he's I know like, I didn't I'm do broke, that. Broke, but I, I want. <laughs> so he gives you a thousand dollars, and then you son. just use that same thousand dollars to buy a car. <laughs> so it was so worthless. Like this poor guy, dude. Like I wrote down in my notes, like Scooter got shafted. In Does this. Scooter actually die? I feel really sad about does he? Scooter. I think he does, man. He's such a nice guy. I'm just gonna quickly Google: Is Scooter dead? <laughs> That's not a good Google. You guys put tails on it. Scooter is presumed dead. Presumed? You don't know. We don't know for sure. This technically uh, all happened after Borderlands Two, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Hyperion is still... Like, Atlas is being built, so I guess. I mean, that's what I really like about this game, though. There's so many cool little characters like that. Yeah. I like Shade. Shade was friggin' creepy, but... Who's I thought Shade? he was very interesting. The, uh... <laughs> the owner of the, uh... Oh, that guy. World of Curiosities or whatever. That guy was creepy as hell. Yeah, yep. His face looked like he was wearing someone else's skin or something. Just uh, unsettling. Too bad he doesn't nice. show up again. He was like super nice. I think yeah. we became friends too. Yeah, yeah. I became friends with him. You can make him sh shoe, but he kind of still tags along though. Of course. But, but yeah. I made friends with him. Yeah. He's, a nice, he's a nice guy. You know, I was actually thinking, what if they, what if they made you pay real money for the stupid hats in Borderlands? <laughs> Real money? We Real have... money in, in your game to microtransactions. Uh, I wouldn't like that. Why? So it's it like change be... my outfit for the... I mean, they do it already for other games, but I feel like it wouldn't work for this game because you only play this game once and... Yeah, pretty much. Right? There's no... There's very... I mean, the idea of having different outcomes is to give that extra oom for replayability, but even that is... There's no it? replayability. Oh, There's man. very little replayability in these games. Like you get the same story just with different little frills. The only way I think it would be profitable is if every like every hat they made a hat like two hundred bucks, and then they just sold it inside the game. Because then maybe a streamer or two would buy it, you know, on stream. Yeah, but that's the only way it would be profitable. But that's not a, that wouldn't be a lot. I would I wouldn't say you know. Uh, you say that, but there was that that stupid TF2 event where they sold wedding rings for a hundred bucks. What? Yeah, Goodness. and you could get married on servers. What? <laughs> oh my god! All right, it was really funny. That's cool. I mean, legit married? Like I don't think that's a. No, it's just. I okay. mean, it's a hundred dollar wedding ring. Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe it is I mean, a legit marriage. You can you can you can get married for like sixty five bucks <laughs> of the county. Oh wow. Looks like TF2 was ripping you off. <laughs> Go get it cheaper somewhere else. Alright. Yeah. So it feels like this game uh, overall was much more humor based compared to, you know, other Telltale games. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, I think that's because they're in the in the Borderlands setting, and that's kind of a staple to the Borderlands brand. So I feel like they actually embrace that, right? And yeah, I mean, I kind of enjoyed the uh, the humor in other games. You know, like yeah, if there's yeah. Walking Dead, and you just do funny stuff. Yeah, the Wolf Among Us too. Even though it has that like noir, serious side yeah, of it, definitely. So, like, there's always room for for good little humor. I mean, uh, something something tells me that the uh, the humor genre feels the best in the, in the point and click. Isn't that what Grim Fandango was? The humor game as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's also it's also a little uh, like I would say uh, the best word like eccentric. I think it's also its main goal. Yeah, that said, I still like Wolf Among. Um, Wolf Among the Us is the best, yeah. Played, or just all the Telltales. I'm not so sure Wolf Among Us or Secret of Monkey Island is better. I'm gonna say mm. Wolf Among Us. Though. Mm. It's tough. Secret of Monkey Island overstays its welcome, and it's actually has legit long. puzzles. It has legit puzzles. I mean, that's that's the reason I wanna I wanna pick it because like it actually has some 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 form of design and and you got to think about some stuff uh but you know maybe you just got to draw the line and say for these types of games you know pretty much fuck design like let's go with just story and try not to put that many obstructions into it oh by the way what did you pick for a uh, scooter's advertisement i think i let him he's he said he what what were the options? I think I said, like, <coughs> do put your face on the thing. Oh, uh, he always puts his face on it. Oh, you mean which, uh, like, the, the any satellite pack? No, no, I mean, uh, if Scooter wants to send a sca- satellite advertisement. So right bef- right after he dies, you have the option to send, uh... He does, you don't know if he died. Fine. Right after <laughs> he gets catch a ride on a rocket, you have the option to throw out this satellite. Oh. And, and you gotta choose what it says. I think I just picked his, his catchphrase. Oh, catch a ride? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what, that's what he said, and that's what he wanted me to say in his, uh, uh, in his little, little, like, when, when he sponsors you, he's like, let me hear your ca- the catchphrase. I'm like, alright, fine. <laughs> he really likes that catchphrase, man. That's what he would want. Well, I chose the uh, the anime one. <laughs> oh. I chose the uh, sea space cowboy. I gotta I gotta see all these pictures. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the options were. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to look at the pictures. I can't find the 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 options of the pictures. I got Whatever. one. I see just the one that I picked. The Catch a ride. See you, space cowboy. I see this one now. <laughs> I thought it was super neat. Like it, it has all of the. Uh, it, it, it lets you choose, you know, what text should be on the thing. I feel like they should have uh, paused a this... little longer on this sound. Like, did you, did you choose to kiss Scooter? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he gotta do it. He's like a hero. <laughs> yeah, there's a. Uh... You can choose see you space cowboy, hero friend and hero, best mechanic ever, or catch a ride. Catch a ride. I chose see you space cowboy because it's a reference to uh, what's that anime? Uh, is it a reference to? It is cowboy a reference. Bebop? Yeah, it's a reference to Cowboy Bebop, man. Uh, at, the end, at the end, at the end of, end of every this episode, season. there's you know see you space cowboy. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 pick all these references, man. <laughs> and then the uh, and then the the guards, they're like, "What is this uh, advertisement doing here? Some anime shit." <laughs> they actually say that. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> all right, so that's all I have to say about Tales from the Boylands. Honestly, yeah. Anything else I you mean, gotta say? I just gotta like emphasize. There's so many cliches, like. Every setup is pretty much like your standard. Well, if, if that's like, your complaint like, about this one, what's your complaint about the you know, Walking Dead and Wolf Among Us? Oh, no, I don't have that, as much complaints with those, to be honest. Um, ah. And I think it's because uh, a lot of the, the Walking Dead's tropes, even though they're kind of 
normal zombie stuff. Like I didn't, I don't, I'm not into the show, right? I, I don't know much about it, and so it was kind of like a little fresh, but even you know, as fresh as a zombie game can be in that genre. Honestly, in The Walking Dead, I'm just like, really, everybody dies again. Yeah, <laughs> This That's how it's gotta be. This repeats Everybody itself dies. so much. Why is everyone such a noob? Does I mean, nobody know how to build armor? <laughs> uh, if 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 zombies broke out right now, you you think you could? I mean, I think I could like weld shit, but I don't know how much of an armor. Yeah, I could I, make. I I know. Like yo, the first couple of weeks you wouldn't be making armor, but this has been like a year. That's you true. still don't have like a suit of wood. You know, just some wood planks. Oh yeah, you know what they do in the wire? Would help, but yeah. You know what they do in the wire? They like duct tape a bunch of uh, what's it called? <laughs> phone books to their stomach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he he gets stabbed, but the phone books actually protect him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, would that help with a gunshot? Probably well, not. Well, it's not about gunshots. It's like, I why are people know. still dying to zombies? You should be like suited up. Yeah, definitely like Iron Man or something, dude. Maybe not Iron, cause yo, who, who well, not- the fuck has Iron? <laughs> Iron Man didn't make his suit out of iron. Maybe some phone books, you know? Maybe just l- multiple <laughs> layers of cloth. Fight, fight the undead with layers of yellow pages. Like, they're, they're, <laughs> they're walking through Ohio, like, in the middle of winter. And they don't have, like, they're not bundled up very much, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like, when I was in Canada, I had, like, three layers of sweaters. <laughs> yeah, but you watched the one in the middle of a... Oh, yeah, I was in sub-zero <laughs> temperatures. It was, uh, it was very cold. Huh. Yeah, and then in, in The Wolf Among Us, I don't really Wolf? have any ma- major good plays, which is why it's my favorite one out of the three. Wow, the glowing review is, I just have no complaints. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's uh, what do you, Does it deserve a Michelin star? Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> I think you have to judge your Michelin star by like the genre, or else you're, you're getting nowhere. <laughs> okay. Three Michelin stars for the person who's number one in the genre, and then two for the second one, and then one for the third one. There you go, for sure. And then, and then the rest is just yeah. You know, the rest is just thumbs up, thumbs down. Like if you like it or no. <laughs> yeah, the Wolf Among Us. I think. Uh, I think yeah, what's so, funny. Well, all right. Tell me your. Tell me your. I like this game now. Tell me your. Uh, your Michelin star for your. Your Michelin stars for uh, point and click games. So I I give Wolf Among Us probably three stars, three Michelin stars. Oh, so it's the best one. Probably, it, right. it lets you be a dick though. That's probably True. why. Like the more you're a dick, the more good outcomes happen. You know, <laughs> in in Tales from the Borderlands, the more you're a dick, the less good outcomes. True. I find myself like sometimes I want to be a good person, like you know, help Vaughn and stuff. But if you're selfish, dude, you just get all the money. You know, you fucking. Oh, I didn't know that. What the fuck? You, you just like you just you you can screw people over, but like they still follow you around. But they, you know, like you actually get more money. I don't think you do. Uh, I don't. Oh uh, man, <coughs> that's only with the uh, uh like being a jerk with Fiona, right? Like that's what I mean. I uh, the only time I got to be a jerk was take this guy's money who's passed out. Uh, you did you steal from Scooter? Uh, no. You mean you mean the investment thing, right? No, no, he has like a box. In oh, of his course, I took that stupid box. He knows, dude. <laughs> and he he watches you. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing? Catch my money." <laughs> but it was right there. I couldn't resist, man. I couldn't resist. I mean, he I, didn't see me do it, but he knows, man. You know? I did it until uh, in regular Borderlands too. He has some boxes around his office. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that it. game is more <laughs> not about <laughs> not about making good choices. <laughs> you just take everything. That's what that game's about. Even when you play multiplayer with your friends, you just fuck, fuck them up. You just take everything. But yeah. So what's your what's your two Michelin star rank for point and click games? Uh, probably Monkey Island. Monkey Island. Yeah, right. the first and then, one. And what's your what's your uh, Tales one star? from the Borderlands? I'm gonna wow. give it. Yeah, we upgraded Tales from the Borderlands from two star to three star. Dang, I, I did, did it. That. I am a master negotiator. I don't. I haven't actually played that many. Oh wait, maybe it's Heavy Rain. I haven't played that game. If if I played Heavy Rain, it might Heavy Rain might fit into the one of the top three. Same thing with uh, what's what's that L.A. Noir? That's basically uh, a point and click adventure game. L.A. Noir, yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it feels it feels like it it's feels in the same similar. genre. Yeah. So if I played those two games, man, I haven't played many games, but if I played them, 
they might have fit in the top three. Weird, man. I think I kind of agree with you all, all, all three, like in that order. Damn, I thought you you told me Tails was your favorite. No, now that I'm playing it again. <laughs> it was just uh, your nostalgia glasses. I you think so, yeah. And I wonder if like I play these other games, like I should play them all back to back to back. You if know? you play if you play Wolf Among Us again, you'll be like, man, this game wasn't all that. Oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't ruin it then. <laughs> shouldn't ruin it. I don't know. That's all we have to talk about, but I guess. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Dude, what do you right? What's your final verdict on the uh, the QTEs though? Because that's that's for me the biggest the biggest drawback of this game. The QTEs, I feel like Wolf had better QTEs because it, it uh, felt more like your life was on the line. In in what Wolf or this one? In the Wolf Among Us. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, the verse, I I guess here like I don't know if it's good or bad, but it was just so predictable. Like every time there was gonna be a Q, the spam Q QTE, I was already doing it, essentially. Yeah, I was like. Uh, all, all the all the QTEs, they just, you know, like it's a comedy game, like they kept the light and all the QTEs, you know, kind of suffered from that. You didn't yeah. really feel like you needed to do any of these QTEs. They weren't really that important. Yep. Uh, there, there was no like cool sequences. Like even... I thought uh, the, the the final boss fight was cool. That was probably the best QTE and everything yeah, else was just meh. But you got, you got, you play like 10 hours to get to this. You never see something as orchestrated as that, you know? <laughs> when it first came up, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, am I playing a game again? <laughs> What's going on? I, I was pretty surprised because I was still playing with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> so next time we're going to be talking about Eternal Card Game. Have you, have you played it yet, Christian? Yeah, man. I'm, the, want... one who, I'm the one who linked it to you. You want to play it together? I have some pretty amazing decks. I don't... Oh, are you serious? I didn't get into it. Into it. I played it. For about a week, two weeks, I want to say. Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I have some pretty amazing net decks. Oh, shiz. <laughs> I just net decked like the free-to-play shimmer pack deck. It's pretty good. All right, all right. G- give, me, give me these net deck sites. What is this? Is there like a hearth pound for... for uh... Uh, maybe. I'll, give, I'll link it to you, you know, in the next show. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Dude, so if... I, I, I'm going to talk about this game when we talk about Eternal. So maybe... Uh, you might want to check it out a little bit. It's called Feria, but it's essentially Hearthstone, but on a on a hex grid. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna talk about that too because I've been playing that recently a little bit. Dude, there's another. There's a lot of uh, what's it called? Free to play, you know. <laughs> uh, card games ever since Hearthstone came up. Yep, yep. I mean, Blizzard sets that momentum for the genre, and then people try to. Ride the coattail. Hey man, I, I would do it. <laughs> and there's no shame. No shame. No shame. Some really good games out of it, dude. Duelist. Now there's Maybe? a. Have you heard of Duelist? Yeah, it, Duelist. This is this game is like Duelist. I actually didn't like Duelist. Duelist is on a on a grid. I did not like Duelist. And this that is much, more on a hex. <laughs> I think I, I thought it was interesting, but I think the the way that they have so much space in the map and there's just it's it's not. It didn't feel like a card game, I guess, is the problem for me. It felt more like it was like a, a really bad, game? yeah, but a really bad version of it, you know, like a bad version of a Fire Emblem or something. Well, uh, have you played Spellweaver? No, I have not played Spellweaver. That game really felt like Magic the Gathering. Uh, I kind of quit probably because it kept resetting my account. <laughs> what? Because yeah, I played it, sound good. I played it back in early, early, you know, beta when oh, they reset everything. Oh, when they had everything. like clothes and they reset and stuff? Yeah. That's basically. Right, I'm looking at it. It's it's okay. It feels very close to Magic: The Gathering, though. But it's online, right? And, and the mechanics are very similar. Yeah, you you attack players, and then other people block. You can still you can still there's a, there's attack a call creatures. Stack and like yeah, there's, there's tokens. Two main phases. And... There's tokens. There's uh, plus one plus one counters. There's minus one minus one counters. It feels it felt very much like Magic, though. Eternal, like it, I think, simplifies a lot of stuff. I say yeah. there's no like there's no such thing as a token creature, you know? Everything's a creature. There's no such thing as plus one plus one and minus one minus one counters. The the nope. creature has minus yep. one minus one forever. You just associate a, a an extra stat bonus. And it, I like the it, it, oh, what's the shit about talking <laughs> this next one, but I really like that the the minion like re, re, retains the buffs that it gets. Yeah. When it dies. See you next time. Yep. For that. 
You got any shameless plugs? Not really. I mean, <laughs> other than you want, you want to plug in and run VR. Okay. Well, well, I have nothing else, though. You can email us, you can email us at smoketreestudios at gmail.com. You can always contact me on Twitter at Mr. Jaggers. I, I'll have a link on the show notes.